All right, guys. Yesterday we had a really interesting podcast on the fix. The fix. Check it out. Uh, it was me, Neil, and Ray, Coach Ray, and we talked about a topic a lot of people don't want to talk about, which is PEDs in the sport. And I think it's probably the biggest decider and issue in our sport right now, as well as probably almost all sports. We're not alone in this. It's the decider, though. Instead of talking about how bad they are and what a difference they make. I've done that. But I would like to talk about, there's something I touched on that people are like, well, how do we fix it? How can we fix it? It'll always be here. But I really think that there are systems in place that we can learn from that could be a structure to change it almost instantaneously. Okay? So, again, check the cliff notes of kind of where I'm going with this with watching the fix from yesterday. So when I look at systems in place that we pay into, um, for instance, you have car insurance. You might be a perfect driver your whole life and you've got to pay into this system. Sometimes even if you own your vehicle, you have still got to pay car insurance to be on roads in certain states. It's the law. You got to be insured in case, in case you have an accident. But those people that have 25 years, never even had a fender bender. They're getting fucked. They're just paying into the system because that's what it is. It's to protect yourself, protect other drivers. It's the law. And we all know to accept it. Same thing. If you're in the union, you pay union dues for the protection of what the union brings. They fight for your wages, your benefits, you, you get a pension, whatever, whatever, however it works. I used to do union when I was a kid. It wasn't for me, but now 20 years later, I find myself without a retirement, a pension, benefits. So you're that guy, you're paying to work for the benefit of being in the union. So you see where I'm going here? So with arm wrestling, a lot of people are saying like, well, how are we going to test? It costs the promoter too much money. No one will ever uh, pay for testing. And I agree, but where the problem lies is we're sitting here thinking that someone's got to do the paying for us. I want this and other people might want this. And if we have a structure in place it's more like we got our shit together and has an answer to a problem that nobody knows how to fix. Maybe we will be more attractive to sponsors. If you ever watch Shark Tank, they see companies that have brilliant ideas, but they're too new in the game. And the guys, Mark Cuban, Mr. Wonderful, they'll go, you got a great product, you're on the right path, but you're too new for us. Come back when you've got, you know, a little more growth. And I think that with arm wrestling... Us not having anything steady is um, hurting us. And with the testing, we all talk about to get the big sponsors to throw the big events. There needs to be a structure or, or some protocol. And I think the way we could really mitigate this is if to be part of this league, like a union, your due would be to pay uh, your own testing. And you'd be on the hook for, say... Mm, four times a year or randomly four to six times a year. Just like when you got to do drug testing for when I worked in Vegas or whatever, if you had a fender bender as a valet or to get a job, you had 24 hours from when they notified you to go get a test. And if you didn't do it, you were done. If you failed it, you were done. Next. And I think if you signed up that, yes, I want to be part of this league I want to be part of this tournament series. I could possibly make with sponsors X amount of money with X amount of opportunity. And they say, okay, you're one of the athletes. You agree to this. Boom. And then they get partnered up with a national chain. And you know your responsibilities. That if you're going to be part of this, it's kind of like your job, your salary, your thing. And if they say, we need you to go test randomly. Like they call you and you get 24 hours. Boom. And I think by taking away that uh, advance notice, it'll be much harder for guys to structure what they do. It'll be much more risky. And some guys, you might hit them this week, and then two weeks later, they get hit again. Just to keep the community off balance, thinking, oh, well, I got hit today. I've got three, four months. No, and it comes out of your pocket. And if you don't like that it comes out of pocket, well, you could then structure in trying to get little sponsors. Because even if it's a couple grand over the course of a year, that's less than a union dues. It's less than you pay for shit like insurance. Fuck, when I had a job and I had to pay health insurance, I haven't been to a doctor in 20 years. 
So that health insurance money was out the window. Some people end up with cancer and needing millions of dollars worth of treatment, so it's a great value. However, if you want a structure in place that could really work, you're on this league to be open for the big tournaments, the big super matches that could come if we have an infrastructure. So then paying your own testing is really, it's just like any other structure we have. It's, it's a necessity. Could then maybe be looked at by things like Olympics and stuff like that. So I think that would really tone it down if you had like four to six totally random tests a year. And it comes out of pocket. And for a sponsor to throw in, you know, a grand, two grand over the course of a year to help with that, that's shit money. And you could, if you are good enough to be one of the people that they think could rise to the top, do a GoFundMe. Sell t-shirts. Do a fundraiser. You could pay for your testing easy. Fact is, if you were adding up what a lot of these guys do on a yearly basis through for their steroids or protein powders or all that bullshit, I guarantee you it adds up to more than four to six random tests a year. You could have like three urine and three blood. I think it's a great idea that's self-funded and zero money out of the promoter's pocket. They can put the money forward for the promotion. So, I mean, I think that's something a lot of people, the problem is, is people got to get on board with it and join that union. And I'd be first to do it. I'd be first to pay for the test. I think the structure could be there and it would be very appealing to people who don't want to get into a pile of shit. They'd like to come into something already organized. Weight classes, I think that's a problem. Nobody has their shit together. I think you could do 150, 175, 200, maybe super. I mean, hell, in boxing, they didn't have anything over 200 pounds. You could be fighting a guy that's 350. And if you really wanted to mitigate it, you could do like the UFC does and make a 265-pound weight cap. That will get rid of some of the freaks, but let's be honest. I don't know a guy on earth that I've met yet that can't make a 265 pound class. There are guys drafted in the NBA that are over seven feet tall that make 265. The UFC doesn't let anyone in over 265. 266 for a non-championship fight, 265 for championship, whatever the fuck that means. But they explain that, that once you're over that weight, you're probably carrying a lot of body fat, you're going to be slower. You're going to be less athletic. And, um, you know, there's a lot that comes with it. And everyone I see now that's over 300 pounds, I guarantee you, if you whittled the body fat or got off the gear or both, you're comfortably under that weight. Vitaly Lelettin was a, was ranked in 209 as an adult. So if you cleaned up the act or treated yourself more like an athlete, you make that weight no problem. So I think that mitigates it a lot. And it also, where we're in such a dominated, like, get bigger, get more torque, I think a lot of these guys are losing some of the athletic sides to it, which could be using your body more efficiently, being more student of the game, focus on things like neurologically, like being faster, being uh, more proficient. When you see a guy like Talgat Akhtayev, he's so crisp and so in tune and so proficient, he's using all his joints, muscles, and everything to be like split second. You don't see any super heavyweights like that. You don't see anybody with that level of like commitment and neurological connection. But why? Because a lot of the guys, as they get bigger, get more focused on horsepower. They get a little sloppier. You know, some of the heavyweights that are very, very good don't seem like very, very good arm wrestlers. They're just very big and strong. And um, I think moving forward, a 265 weight class for the same reason that a multi-billion dollar company like UFC does it, 265 cap would tone down some of the crazy drug abuse as well as make for better athletes, a more appealing athlete. So I think that's a solution to a lot of the problems. I'd be the first to jump in, sign the contract, take my yearly tests, however anybody wants to structure them. Once you sign the contract, you know that you get a call, you get 24 hours to be there. Don't go to some remote place in Mexico knowing that your opportunity to win a, a humongous tournament for a couple hundred thousand dollars could be out the window because you can't get to a testing facility. When you sign the contract, you'd be owned moving forward, like the Olympics or anything. That's the vision. But you could definitely start a league and shut this shit down because there'll be a few cutesy, cheeky people that will try to beat it and they get caught and X'd or humiliated it's going to shake a lot of people up. 
And there'll still be some smart people in there that will find their way to the system. But I'll tell you what, it would change the landscape by probably over 90%. So food for thought, you got to think. All you got to do is pay your, your, your toll. Go down the highway, you got to pay a fucking toll. Why? Because just you using that highway, there's a million people using the highway. But oh, when, when we need road work or shit like that, you're only doing a little piece of it, but those little pieces add up. So even that money for toll for dues and stuff could go towards a self-funded money bracket, super matches everything until it gets interest. But I think that by having a structure that's that efficient in place, somebody that's a bigger player would see that and go, oh, well, this is something I could buy onto now. Right now, we're all chickens with our heads cut off with the restrictive valves off. It's like coming into a fucking kindergarten cop when, when the kids were going crazy and climbing the curtains and shit like that. Like, there is no, like, anyone's got their shit together and the restrictive valves are wide open. Nobody wants that headache or liability. So here's the fix. Question is, what's the community going to do with it? I think it's going to be, you'll know exactly where who stands and what they're doing when you draw a line in the sand like this and then the people jump the line and go, great idea, I'm down with it. And then the rest of people are like, Arr. How do I detract from this one? So let's see who's who. Oh yeah, just a footnote. As I was watching this back, I didn't touch on <clears throat> the viability. A lot of people sit there and say arm wrestling is not big enough. They're not big enough. That's fucking horseshit. There's hundreds of thousands of pullers. I mean, just Kazakhstan alone has probably got over 10,000 or some shit when I watched that documentary. And there's definitely, when you see people who have YouTube channels, like Schoolboy, uh, it, it, what, one and a half plus million, 1.6 million subscribers? What's Devin at? Over a half a million, you know, some of Larry's bigger videos with arm wrestling. The subscribers and the views and the interest is out there. It's how it's put together, I guess. So I don't want to hear that shit because something like Cornhole, if you go look up some of Cornhole's biggest videos in the subscribers and everything it's so fractional yet their structure is in place and they got their shit together and they're picking up sponsors and growing exponentially so when you get something that comes in behind you that's far newer and far smaller yet they're attracting sponsors because their shit's together you're going to ask yourself is it really the interest in the numbers or is it being fucked internally